Hello there. Welcome to this uh, week's episode of the Southwest Hearts Local Community History Show. And uh, as always, uh, you've got me, Chris Ogle, but you've also got uh, David Sawyer. Come on, say hello, David. Hi, Chris. Good afternoon, everybody. So um, we are we are in spring. It would seem as the weather out there looks really nice. Beautiful out there today, and uh, someone's already commented on one of the photographs that you'll see later how blue the sky was this, this morning. So blue, in fact, so blue that <laughs> I walked back from my meeting. I came out of Basing House, walked down the road. And I thought, hang on a minute, I'm going to go back and take a picture of that blue sky. <laughs> it was so blue. <laughs> That's this morning, exactly it? what I did. <laughs> yeah, I mean. The first picture you'll see will show that in Kings Langley. But uh, before we get to those, just uh, a few things that obviously talking about Kings Langley, it's a very old village. Um, in fact, just to the south of the, the village, they excavated a Roman villa. They were going back nearly 2000 years for that, I should imagine. Is, is that uh, is that um, uh, is that actually on show? Not that I've found. Um, there's a lot more history out there and I, I've only got a very short um, history here for a more detailed history the best place to go to would be the, the the Kings Langley History Society and you can find them via the library in Kings Langley but um, say so the village itself is mentioned in the Doomsday Book in 1086. Well it, it would be I would think because the actual St Lawrence Church in Amherst Langley one that we will be uh, attending to shortly I would have thought that church St Lawrence was built in 1066 apparently. Yeah the King's Langley Church dates back to the 13th century. Right okay so uh, they were hoofing it up to Abbots presumably at that time. It, the whole area it, it, we're, we're very fortunate where we are the whole area is steeped in history and there's so much to find and, and see and uh, enjoy and it's one of those things that some of the things that I've discovered in this short while I've done some research with having lived here for 35 years I never knew I never knew that uh, these things happen but we'll talk to those we go through say you can get to village of course by any one of at least three methods which is by by road and um, we've got the lovely m25 junction 20 which brings the the, the modernity to the village yeah um, you've got the rail now the rail there was um, go back to our go to our first picture if you want to get do the picture sharing. Yeah, let me uh, let me get uh, myself on uh, the main screen here and then uh, let's share and let's go go grab it. There okay, so right, and we know where we are this week. Yeah, um, that looks like uh, Kings Langley Station to me. It is Kings Langley Station, and the, the railway came through there. Um, it was started in 1834 by two gentlemen that might be known a little bit, but George and Robert Stevenson. Yep. And it terminated at Boxmore at that time. It was a short one, but it brought people into the village, the same as the canal did. And of course, the canal brought prosperity, but um, between the railway and the canal we had a little factory which is picture number two that's john dickinson um that just where is that king's dangley station because you've got apsley station right if you uh, apsley station is further on um if you come from the m25 um junction towards the village in king's Langley, yeah Take it right at the first roundabout. Oh yeah, it's opposite. I was thinking that's absolutely, but it's not absolutely, is it? No, that's King's Lane. You go go to the top of that road, turn right, and the station's on your left. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm that's not, uh, not. it's not actually in King's Angle, is it? It's a little bit out of it. It's just outside the, the village, but the village has grown up again around various things. And here we have, of course, something that we all remember. Were you a little old teeny boy and girl, Chris? Well. Funny you should say that. Um, 
I was, and but there's a bit of family history there. My mum worked at Ovaltine. All right. She worked for the sales director and uh, I think for the chairman at, at some point. And my sister, she started out there in the Bort Ledger. Excellent. But, uh, so, they, well, they managed to salvage the, the, the facade of, of the building, which is sort of, um, well, it goes back to 1913. Mm. The factory was built, and it's a nutritional barley drink developed by one <laughs> George yeah. Wanda. How a... how awesome is this? Last week, I think it might have been Tuesday or Wednesday, I bought a tub of oval tea. <laughs> <laughs> and now that is a pure coincidence for this show, by the way. But I bought a tub of oval tea, right? And um, I was. Uh, I had a, I had it. Now, if it might be Monday or Tuesday, anyway, I had a, it here, uh, staying over here. And then I took it, I was staying at my mum, so I took it with me. And uh, I had a cup, she'd already gone to bed. And the next day, she says to me, Oh, I see you've got some oval tea there. Can I have some of that? <laughs> Just it's one of those things that I, I think I had as a child, and uh, a lot of people of uh, my generation. Um, we were the oval things, boys and girls, and the little um, jingle that they had to advertise. It was great. I think it's now actually produced in Switzerland after they took that uh, the factory. The factory is now just a facade, and the whole site is now apartment buildings. Yeah. So, very nice, and it, it makes good use of a building rather than actually knocking the facade down, a bit like we're seeing in Watford with the old Lloyds building. And also with the uh, Mecca. Mecca, indeed, that that's gone some undergone some changes through through the years. I mean, that that was a completely different building to start with, but now, yeah, they're going to keep what what's there and uh, build around it. Which is, mm. It's good, saves too much destruction of some of these buildings that are fairly iconic in the area. Absolutely. Okay, and next one. Moving on. I don't know which way I'm going here, actually. Oh yeah, there. There we go. The old Grand Union Canal. This is something that brought some prosperity to the village because we, we've talked before about the paper industry in the area. And of course, this would go between something like the, the Croxley Mill up to the Apsley Mill. And it, it was the, one of the best way of transporting goods in the days. I mean, the, the canal opened in around 1797. And it was the way of getting goods from London to Birmingham eventually um, didn't have any motorways or trains that were going to do that journey and so the station opening a uh, line came in 1834 and this is uh, a good uh, nearly 40 years prior to that, that the canal I, was there, it, so that it's, um, we, we we don't appreciate this do we 40 years is a lifetime's work basically so oh, these, these canals were providing uh, the only mode of transportation for heavy goods like paper, you know, raw paper, paper coal, what, what, whatever coal, was all sorts of things for for a generation's work, whole work life. Yeah, and it, it, it's not like today you could put, jump on a train and you can be in Birmingham, or you can actually now get on a train and be in Paris in two and a quarter hours. Here to get from London to Birmingham will probably take a week at least. At the very least. And, and, and the thing is that with these they were it was it was a you could haul a massive amount of cargo up and down these things um which which would you just didn't have the vehicles to do that you had probably stage coaches and stuff you know like the old coaches and stuff but there wouldn't have been anywhere near the infrastructure of the roads would have been nowhere near as as reliable in terms of being able to ensure the goods got from A to B fairly safely as you were on these canals. Yeah, the other thing to consider when, with the canals at this time is that the um, the barges, the longboats, were not powered apart from by horse. Mm. You have a horse towing them along there and coming to tunnels. That, that was the good fun for the people on the barges because they'd have to walk the barge through by laying on the roof and walking across the, the top of the the uh, opening, which is not a very pleasant thing to do, but that was 
necessary. And imagine the weight of those barges. But you know, like one horse could tow a couple of barges, probably. Whereas, was, you know, once it gets going, it gets going, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Whereas with a with a, on the, if you like, as a as a rickety old uh, horse drawn carriage, uh, you just wouldn't have been able to move stuff about at all, would you? No, not really. Not not to the extent that they did on the canals. Um, so I mean, it was it was amazing technology to be able to have these things. And we look back and say, amount of effort that had gone into building these things. But when you consider you had no engines, no. And no roads. It's like a horse could pull a lot of weight, dragging it along a bit of water. Well, again, it, it, the barges took a lot more than you would ever get onto a, 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 a cart, and a horse and cart. Yeah. This is where you've got your different types of horses, of course. I mean, on a horse and cart, you, you might have a, a relatively large horse, but then you get the big big sort of Clydesdales and things like that pulling these ones because they needed the, the amount like the same as you had in the farmer's fields to plough the fields. Yeah. Again, you had big horses with stamina. And, and of course, these horses, these big horses were like three horsepower. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, some of these are absolutely massive. They, they you know, I, I stand <laughs> six foot and they can tower over me. It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Amazing stuff, actually. When you put yourself back into those times, it's like this was unbelievably revolutionary in terms of being able to migrate stuff some some distance, and, and, and where it wasn't really perishable. Of course, it didn't matter, did it? Yeah, I mean, it was a shame that some of these uh, canals fell into disuse, and um, I'm glad to see that things like the Kennet Navan have been completely revamped and dug out. There's, Lots of other little ones are. I mean, I, I enjoy the programs about canal journeys yeah. around, around the country. And uh, some of the actual engineering that went into these is phenomenal when you consider the time. You know, we're talking yeah. in the late 18th century. I mean, all the run up loose gates and all the, you know, side channels and stuff to take excess water away. And, you know, unbelievable, really. And pumping stations they had to develop as well. To, to get the water there. Mm. Excellent. Oh, there we go. All right, we, we move on to <laughs> Kings Langley Church, All Saints, and parts of which date to the 13th century. And there are various things in the church. If we just slip through to the next one. All Saints by the sun there, David, but it's, uh... <laughs> it was a very sunny morning. <laughs> Here in, in the church is a Jacobean pulpit, which is uh, very ornately uh, carved and stands proud. It's um, not exactly where you'd expect it to be because it's pulpits you normally expect to be up uh, towards the front end of the church, as it were, towards the altar. But this one is sort of in the middle of the church. Is that so, reckon because they changed the layout of the church, or did they? I was just about to say, unless they changed the layout of the church, the church grew in size, or something. Although saying that, um, the next slide is going back goes back to um, this is the um, where are we? This goes back to thirteen sixty one to fifteen eighty eight. This is. Um, the brass frontage to the Carter tomb. Now, who's right. the Carter? The Carters are the ancestors of the 39th President of the United States, Jimmy Carter. Really? Yeah. So this is where his family came from originally, which is good for me because that gives me another scope in my USA history tours. Do you get people going down there doing brass rubbings, do you? Um, I'm not sure because when I went to see it and the, the vicar, I, I couldn't, I've been there before, but I couldn't see it this time. And the vicar said, ah, yes, come with me. And he moved a small square of carpet that was covering it to keep uh, it in a good condition so people weren't actually walking over it, although it is in one of the aisles of the church. So that was obviously wear it down considerably. Yeah. But, but no, it's there and it's another connection from my point of view of American history in England. And uh, here lies the body of John Carter, 
late of Gifres, is that? Who yeah. had two wives. Well, I think one of them might have died first. Yeah, he had he could have been a Mormon. Four sons and five daughters, and by the second he had five sons and four daughters. <laughs> he didn't have much time to do much else then, did he? Well, he probably skipped the TV, I would have thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> even even didn't even turn the radio on, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah. <laughs> but that's uh it dates back to Jimmy Carter, and there he is. The man there he is. Uh... Does he know? <laughs> I, I don't know if he knows. I mean, I was just looking, making sure his suit was in pristine condition with no stains on it. Yeah. But, uh, no, Jim Carter. Wasn't he a peanut farmer? He was a peanut farmer down in was it Arkansas, White Rock, something like that. Mm. Mm. And the least said about his presence, he's better. Now, this is something better to talk about, isn't it? This is the wow. Saracen's Head pub in, in the main high street. And this goes back to the 16th century, and as we were talking about earlier, it's a coaching inn. Where the uh, stagecoach... That, was... that, that must be one of the oldest buildings in the town, apart from that church. Well, it's um, 16th century, so it's not as old as some of the buildings there. So it's it, it's old, but um, not as old as, uh, say, obviously the church and uh, when the railways and the canal came through. Well, I suppose it's about the same time as the, the, the canal. So, it. so is it 1600 or 1500 or something? Well, no, 16th century, so that would be 1500, so that would yeah. predate it because, again, it was all horse-drawn traffic at that time. Mm. Again, we, we've seen this in, in one of the pubs, that, I think it was the, the One Bell or, or One Crown in Watford, which was a true coaching inn as well, which had the archways that take the uh, horses through for stabling. Yeah, I should imagine now that area for this pub is the um, car park. So you lose some of the uh, historical buildings. So where about that? Is that the lot on the corner near Chipperfield Road? Is it? Sorry, where's that on the corner near Chipperfield Road? Is it? Or... No, uh, Langley Hill. Okay, that's actually looking down from Langley Hill. Those traffic lights to, to turn left for Langley Hill. Wow. And the pedestrian as well, so it's at that point. So you come in past the red line on your left, and um, a little far up close. Um, the uh, coffee shop, I, I so far, oh, yeah. it's virtually it's very nearly opposite there. Oh, okay, Fred and Ginger's, yeah, right. Yeah. Rudolph Stone School, not particularly old as history goes, but the site is old. The site is the site of King's Langley Palace. Right. This was a royal palace from the Plantagenet Kings of England. Really? And, um, in the reception of the school, they can, you can see some of the artifacts, which is the next picture there, from that they have excavated from the site. Right. Not very, it's only a very small case there, but they, I did ask, I've like been made aware that there is still part remains of a pillar the base of one pillar somewhere within the school grounds right uh, when speaking to receptionist she didn't know where it was and it was difficult to do anything because the children were in school and um didn't want me wandering all over the place by myself to try and find it <laughs> which is understandable might not have made it on Even the show I David we might have had to broadcast from the local police station <laughs> oh no I'm, I, I am DBS checked oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that, I don't know a lot about the Rudolf Steiner school, just that it is there, and uh, but the palace clearly is uh, completely disappeared, pretty much. Then it has. There's uh, the next one, next couple of slides will um, have some of the remains, the priory, right? Okay, and this was a. The next one is actually of the priory. This is the entrance way to it, and then we go on to. A priory. This was. Um, this sorry. Whereabouts is this? Again, at the top of Langley Hill. If you go to the top, the road bears ninety degrees right towards the Rudolf Steiner School car park. And if you turn left into the car park and carry straight on, instead of going into the car park, you come up to the priory there. Never actually. I've never actually seen this building ever. I hadn't seen it before today. Unbelievable, isn't it? 
I actually published this on Facebook today and had a couple of people say, where is this building? Is it still in use? And I, I do believe it's still in use. It looks too good to be... Um, it's in good nick. Where, what, what's it used for? It, I, well, it was a priory. A Dominican order was established there by Edward II in 1308. <laughs> Presumably not in that front bit. That back bit looks a bit older. That bit looks a bit older. I think obviously through the years there's been some additions. I did have a picture of a building next to it, but I couldn't ascertain exactly what it was. So I, I decided not to use it in the show because I can't give you any information about it. So this one I, I, I can say, yes, it was established there. And it only once in its history did it actually have a prioress as opposed to a prior in charge of the abbey. Right. The Priory, I should say, not Nabby. Unbelievable. Yeah. I'd say King's Lang is full of it. And what we have now, next, we have some notable people. Now, this, I don't think they had their camera working on this one very well to start with. This is a chap who was buried in the church, Edmund de Langley, who was the first Duke of York. Is this the guy in the blue, presumably sitting there? The guy in the holding court. I think there was some debate or discussion going on, and it looks like there's an army probably the French by the look of it on the right hand side. It, it, no, it's no. not a good likeness I've heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's I'll tell you something, something, that guy in the boat looks a bit small. Is that a child? <laughs> it looks just like a shell from a, a pot of peas, doesn't it? Yeah. Like a compar comparison to the army to the right. Yeah. <laughs> a perspective has been, uh, I've got a bit out of hand there with that, uh, uh, person in the boat um is that the tower of london it's, no it can't be the tower of london it's far too early for that and that person in the green in the buildings look like they've got any legs no it, it looks a bit like punch <laughs> doesn't it <laughs> uh, yeah what a what an unusual picture where is this picture put um i i, I got this from wikipedia Right. Uh, it's about the only only picture I could find of uh, Ed, Edmund de Langley. But uh, it's just a, a little bit of interest because the man's buried in, in, in the village. So Edward de Langley, who was the what, the founder of the village? No, no, he was just um, the, 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 the village goes back, as I say, that they had um, a Roman villa excavated there. So the, it goes well back well beyond that. So we must be talking about 18, 1900 years ago. Yeah. We start coming, coming together. And then it was, a, again, mentioned in the Doomsday Book in 10, 1086. And um, this is prior to that. I mean, if the, the Priory was established by Edward II in 1308. So you're talking at least 100 years on from Roman occupation. Mm. Interesting, yeah. It's a more... Now this this is Christopher Augustus Cox, and you will see he has upon his left breast a medal. Yeah. Can, can you make it out? I can, yeah, just about. It's the Victoria Cross. Right. He is also buried in the church. He he won the Victoria Cross as a stretcher bearer um, in the First World War, and under heavy fire, he and a couple of others were doing stretcher bearer work under heavy fire whilst in on the battlefields in France. And for that he won the Victoria Cross. Amazing. Mm. But not so, posthumously. I mean how he shows Victoria Crosses out posthumously these days, don't they? Yeah, but I wouldn't suggest that's posthumous because he's wearing it. Yeah, that's right I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise he, they propped him up quite well anyway. <laughs> yeah, they've done a good job of exhumation, yes. <laughs> Next one you will you might know. He's our boxer, isn't he? That boxer. He, this yeah. chap went to King's Langley School. Anthony Joshua, the IBF heavyweight champion of the world. Right. Uh, won gold at the, nine, uh, the 2012 Olympics, and it's because of him that we have a gold post box in the centre of Watford. Indeed. Great achievement. Yeah. And he went to King's Langley School, right? King's Langley School, yeah. Mr. Taylor. Man, Graham Taylor, born in Kings Langley. Was he? Hmm? He was born in Kings Langley, was he? According to the 
the book of words, the Wikipedia. I have him in Kings Langley. He's been a local man. Um, what more can you say about him? He was a great uh, ambassador for Watford Football Club. Mm. Manager of England, manager of Aston Villa. Actually, it was one of my clients once. I picked him up and took him home, which I was very privileged to do. Excellent. And my last but no means least, a, a little bit of more, much more modern stuff. Kings Langley then dealing with recyclable energy, renewable energy, with a, a windmill, which is on the old Ovaltine farm. And you can see it off the M25 as you go. Yeah, driving. you can, yeah. It is quite a large one, but uh, unlike down in Cornwall where you have fields of the things, it's just a singleton by itself. It's been there some years, that, hasn't it? It's been there a good few years now, but uh, it's, uh, I don't know exactly how much energy it can produce or who's using it or, or what. But, um, it's just nice to see that there is renewable energy going on out there, I'm not relying on all the fossil fuels that uh, we have done. I tell you what would be an interesting. Uh, I'll come on to it in a minute. But uh, talking about Ovaltine Farm and stuff, because of course that used to produce milk, and there were dairy cows and everything on there. And yeah. as a young child, uh, I think it was still operating. But uh, um, we had quite a lot of uh, stuff like that going on. Yeah, it was quite a bit in the area. Of course, it, it used to, this area used to be full of farms all over the place. Yeah. Apart from the agricultural revolution. And, you know, when, when we had that. So, yeah, that's a, sorry, that's a short uh, a short history of Kings Langley. More can be found by contacting the Kings Langley History Society. Um, have they got a website at all or an on, any online presence whatsoever? They, they do have, yes. And um, again, it's one of those things I've been doing today, doing some more research in between trying to do some work as well <laughs> it'd be good to get their, it'd be good to get their uh, details because on the community hub we have a section for history and societies and stuff like that and i could just pop that up on there and at least that gives them a uh, a bit yeah, of exposure yeah no yeah, no problem I'll, I'll get that for you it's uh look up the king's king's language history and it will come come up so we can add that to the list of things in the, the history Fabulous. Okay. Um, good stuff. Well, that was a really interesting show. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank you very much for your... Uh... Well, I, I, I enjoyed finding out these things and saying that, that we had a royal palace in, in, in the vicinity. And it's not one thing that we've had them visited. Um, visited uh, the old Casterbury House in the past, but to actually have a royal palace here, and it's a shame that it's gone because that would have been a bigger draw for Kings Langley as well. The Olympic Stylist School wouldn't be there though, would it? So, well, plenty of other spaces that could have gone. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I suspect it was already gone by the time they decided to set up there. Oh, yeah. Okay, fabulous. Uh, so, I was just going to suggest one of the things we might want to consider doing is uh, a show on the old. Uh, uh, Leavesden Mental Hospital because there is a guy who floats about I don't know his name exactly but he um, he is uh, runs tours of uh, the mental hospital uh, around the grounds about what was and the else but I lived at the bottom of that hill <laughs> and uh, it would be quite it would be quite interesting to just get some of that old history out because it only shot in 1997 i think it was i actually played cricket against them one stage because they had the sports ground the other side of the road from the hospital yeah back backing onto tanner's wood yeah yeah so yeah yeah it might be worth a look and see if the see what we can or what i can get out of it to uh, if we can get sufficient to make a show because all the mental hospitals we know of now have actually disappeared. They're now housing estates wherever you go. If you go to Shenley, the, the Leavesden one and Harpenden. They're all just 
it's a Harper Berry, actually. Not but there's some, there's some, I, I know, I know people who used to. Well, I don't know whether they're still alive now, but there were people who used to live there, who used to work there. And clearly, I was at the bottom of the hill there. There was a nurse who were there were two nurses that lived in the street who worked at the hospital, um, and the, the farms went on for miles around the back because the whole place was pretty much self-sustaining it was like its own internal city really well, if you go just past the entrance and we know it's now uh, a housing estate itself so i pick customers up if you just go past i think it's tyler's way again yeah. up their far farmland again another big housing estate and 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 they had all the there there were at one point i think it was three or four thousand inmates but they had as many staff what we can what i can we can do i might make the suggestion chris because it's um history might be a bit limited in respect of just the one thing if we could incorporate that possibly within abbott's langley okay well i'll try and track down the guy's name because there's, no. there's, there's a there's a signpost up there which tells you um when the tours are and who who runs them with a contact number okay so I'll, I'll try and get the details i think i took a picture of it some time ago so i think i might even have it on my phone yeah well yeah if we can get hold of the chat then perhaps uh, we can find out even more so we, we have two options there on that either as a, okay. a project or as a, a joint one with uh, the abbott's language area fabulous okay well that'll be a wrap then thank you david um Thank you, Chris. And thank you for all your hard work. And uh, uh, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this show, come catch us in a couple of weeks. <laughs> we, we don't know what we'll be doing yet, but you can bet your bottom dollar it'll be a lot of fun. So thanks, David. Thanks, Chris. And uh, see you in a couple of weeks. Okay, cheers.